You remember that ship, the Dutch oven, formerly known as the Fremantle Highway? Do you remember how, about a month ago now, it just caught fire out of the blue, just like that, and barbecued itself for a week or so in the North Sea, and only just limped back into port? They tugged it back to the Netherlands, a floating theme park of toxic waste and hilarious structural damage, with cars upliftingly melted right into the upper decks. Remember how we were assured the 500 EVs on board just all miraculously survived? Move over, loaves and fishes. It's a freaking miracle. Not only that, the CEO of the salvage operation confidently assured the world the EVs aboard, quote, seemed to be in good condition. Remember that? Then, about two minutes after those assurances were made, this unauthorised shot of a barbecued Porsche Taycan EV in fairly spectacular condition, admittedly, was leaked. Picasso's busted ass burned out Taycan. Right there. Well, here's another one of those miraculous electric survivors. A beautiful three prong EQE, truly embodying the cockroach that inspired its underlying design, engineered to survive a floating apocalypse, a proper maritime and automotive hellscape, winning the ultimate automotive cockroach survival challenge, emerging from the Dutch oven a month later, looking stunning in charcoal and white. Perfectly movable too, unquote, which was another awesome sound bite from We Really Should Have Kept Our Friggin' Trap Shut, LLC, the salvage company Boss Carlos. They're nothing if not accurate. Perfectly movable, provided you have a giant fuck-off crane to do the perfect movement. <laughs> it's nothing. A quick turtle wax touch-up won't fix, is it? I might get Tiffany to turtle wax me later. The survival of Satan's lean, mean limousine was ultimately quite short-lived. The miracle EQE was unexpectedly recalled back to hell shortly after touchdown on dry land. It remained perfectly movable in an apparently good condition right up to the point when a fire sparked up spontaneously deep in the rectum of one of its ten filthy, toxic nickel cobalt manganese battery modules. Incidentally, if you look closely, you can tell that they already knew that vehicle was certain to defecate in a fiery way in its trousers because the countermeasures had come out before the car had, right? Presumably they measure the temperature of the battery during the unloading process. How else would you tell? That brilliantly engineered luxury cockroach uses the least stable EV battery chemistry known to man, which runs away thermally at roughly 135 degrees C, I think, if memory serves. This is occurring roughly a month after the Dutch oven first made the news, which is roughly three weeks after the whole thing went out. So nothing intrinsically fucked up about any of that, is there? It's soldiered on so bravely, Satan's EQE, perfectly movable by the crane, into a giant orange hazmat bin, which was then dutifully filled with thousands of litres of water to prevent the Dutch oven from leading the news again that evening. Thanks to the diligent efforts of Hazmat Harry, Hazmat Hans, Hazmat Heinrich and Hazmat Henry here. Hooray. Hallelujah. Happy days. It's not funny. The Royal Dutch Hazmat Quartet then dutifully covered the beautiful corpse of the EQE in such good condition, so movable, with a shroud. The better for the salvage company to release season two of its smash hit Netflix drama, World's Most Improbable EV Survival Stories. Hilariously, of course, this all occurs in the shadow of the Dutch oven's huge no smoking warning sign, proving, if nothing else, that fate was fully stocked up on irony that day. Emotional sounds for a unique driving experience. You can recognise a genuine AMG at first sound. Even an all-electric Mercedes AMG therefore offers an incomparable authentic sound experience. Satan's official car maker, Three Prong, really does think 
of everything. Each Precision Shitbox AMG EQE comes preloaded X Factory with a subscription to every self entitled premium EV twat's most emotionally engaging audio tracks. Just 30 euros a month by direct debit. More in Australia. These include energetic jingles such as Raging Forest Fire, Satan's Weekly Catch Up with Adolf, and Propane Torch Interrogation from the smash hit Guantanamo Bay double album. There's also the eclectic April 1986 in Pripyat, plus Toxic Cloud Envelops Your Family, that's a bit sombre, and the haunting classic It's Probably Time to Switch Off the Life Support. Whatever EV driving mood you're in, Three Prong has just the Goldilocks twat appropriate backing audio track for you. Just 30 euros a month. It wasn't an EV that caused the Fremantle Highway to catch fire. That was a recent headline from electdrive.com. The EV zealot media, I'd argue, is eventually going to have to admit, and that would be to itself and to its audience, that the presence of EVs in enclosed spaces, such as ships, but also in underground car parks, in shopping malls and at major sporting events, etc., inherently elevates risk. It just does. And while the cause of any fire is so obviously important, the real issue here is that the presence of EVs in any fire, irrespective of the cause, clearly increases the severity of that fire. It makes it harder and sometimes impossible to fight. It produces more toxic and hazardous smoke, and therefore it increases the risk to all of us. Pretty clearly, the recent video of Satan's Cockroach proves that the risk is not over once the fire has simply, quote-unquote, gone out. These things are ticking fucking time bombs that are unstable for weeks after the main event. I fully appreciate that electric utopia is a religion of a sort, inasmuch as it requires belief in the absence of proof, and it is wholly intolerant of those who don't share that belief, or heaven forbid, actually speak out against it, however respectfully. This is a conflict between the appeasement of outspoken people who think their opinion, their faith, whatever, really, really matters, and those of us who would prefer to live in a world where the facts actually dictate things such as public safety policy. Man dies in futile attempt to extinguish fire possibly caused by batteries in Sydney's Punch Bowl. This tragedy occurred last Sunday. According to the ABC News report, three men were in a house in suburban Sydney at 10 p.m. eating a meal. When they became aware of a fire on the level above, two of those men fled and one decided to grab an extinguisher and head upstairs to fight the fire, which is believed to be attributable to a battery. Battery fires can start quickly and burn with extreme heat and are difficult to extinguish. That's Ray Surety from Fire and Rescue New South Wales. The risk is if you go into a smoke environment, it only takes a couple of breaths of this toxic gas that you can be unconscious and on the floor. The 54 year old man who attempted to fight that fire tragically did not survive. This is apparently the kind of battery that you would find upstairs in a house, so not several hundred kilos of the same battery chemistry typically found in an EV, which would be orders of magnitude bigger. Of course, aside from the sheer difference in size, one of the most worrying things about EV batteries is the fact that they are encased in aluminium, like a solid aluminium container which greatly increases the risk of explosion. On exactly the same day as that fiery tragedy in Sydney, half the world away in Germany, an EV just exploded, pretty much levelling the premises it was in at the time. In a post on LinkedIn, Mr Paul Christensen, the founding director of Lithium Safety Limited, a consultancy, said, The crux of all of these is the very large volume of gas produced inside the lithium-ion cells in thermal runaway, which generates high pressures. Mr Christensen identified four specific risks associated with this kind of confined vapour cloud explosion. Number one, 
the battery just explodes due to the pressure build up inside of it. Number two, the vapor cloud vents into the passenger compartment and then explodes. And this is unthinkable, right? Like it's crying out for a UN ECE and or FMVSS design regulation countermeasure. Regulatory intervention, in other words. Speaking as an engineer, though, I can tell you that many people generally presume they're protected by safety standards in so many environments where often there are none. And personally, I would not want to be trapped in a car in the aftermath of a crash if fate happens to tick box number two, battery vents on me and then explodes inside the compartment that I'm in. Wouldn't want to do that on any day, ending in why, frankly. Dying inside a de facto fucking flamethrower does not sound like fun. These are potentially the most dangerous, as little or no warning, particularly for one, shrapnel and very long flames, much more than a few metres. Risk number three, unconfined vapour cloud explosion. That's where the vapour cloud is vented outside the vehicles and then explodes. This includes cases where the vehicle is inside a structure, such as a garage. And in other news, people park their EVs in garages attached to their homes and they charge these cars in that environment many nights a week. Do we have regulations on this? Do we need them? No and yes, respectively, I'd suggest, in most jurisdictions. I'm also seeing a low-speed EV to EV crash in the corner of some busy underground car park and a group of onlookers gathered all enthusiastically filming on their phones just vying for insta fame and then boom mass casualty event number four flare like flames which is where the vapor cloud vents outside the vehicle and immediately ignites with flames a few meters long what an interesting time i'd suggest to be a paramedic the thing that guts me about this Dutch oven issue, frankly, is the cover-up and the non-disclosure of the most basic facts surrounding this event, the comprehensive lack of transparency and honesty. This is a public interest matter. There needs to be full disclosure. We could learn rather a lot from this incident and we could use it to make society safer. Right from the moment the first emergency responder radio transmission happened, attributing the fire to an EV, there's been an obvious heavy-handed and ongoing effort to change the narrative so that the EV is exonerated at all friggin' costs. I frankly suspect that this is happening at the highest level. I'm talking Dutch regulators, the EU parliament, the British government. Let's not forget the salvage company is British. These agencies are all heavily leveraged into the concept of electric utopia. They don't want you to see this event for what it is. A case of EVs, paradoxically, saving the fucking planet. One giant hazmat disaster at a time. I don't want to sound like a foil hat conspiracy nut, right? But the military would call what's been happening here psyops. In other words, it's a bullshit campaign to massage public opinion and keep everyone sweet on EVs. First radio transmission. An EV started the fire, very quickly hosed down. Then we get told there's only 25 EVs on board and the cause is under investigation. This number of EVs is eventually upgraded to ballpark 500 EVs. Then we get told, hallelujah, they all miraculously survived. And then the toasty Taycan picture is leaked. Then the three-prong EQ cockroach attempts to go into thermal runaway in full public view inconveniently, and this is only thwarted by the quick intervention of the Royal Dutch Hazmat Quartet. No word yet on the number of hybrids on board, of course, and let's not forget they've got dirty big batteries in them as well. Why is the bullshit surrounding the issue of EVs on board this ship so fucking thick, right? Who benefits from EVs enjoying a stellar reputation? When I worked on tabloid TV and talkback radio, I often had to interview people about things they really didn't want to be interviewed about. And the big trick there 
okay, is to listen really hard at what they're not saying because that often tells you a great deal more than the bullshit they do sprout. None of these motherfuckers, I'd suggest, has disclosed the full shipping manifest, like exactly what vehicles were on the ship, exactly which ones survived. I'd be happy with an executive summary, like how many Volkswagens, Porsches, Three Prongs, Bavarian money wasters, etc., all broken down into combustion, hybrid and full EV, which ones lived, which ones died. Or break it down deck by deck. I don't give a shit as long as it's disclosed. We're hardly talking about the nuclear launch codes, are we? There's no operational security dimension to this issue, at least none that I can see. They've had a month to get this shit together. They know exactly what was on the ship. None of the car makers is saying anything. The salvage company keeps shooting itself in the vegetables every time it opens its trap, and that always proves to be bullshit. So... While you can't exactly cover up a giant floating automotive barbecue that's 12 fucking stories high on the open ocean, you can certainly massage the truth around it if you try. And the zealot EV media is going to lap it up because they're singing to the faithful, right? And the faithful want to believe. Actually, the faithful need to believe. I'm sensing, therefore, a murder of high-level PR operatives operating in the background. The same collective noun as for crows, incidentally, appropriately enough, all desperately toiling to keep this whole floating EV blast furnace shit fight on message, as they say in the game of professional bullshitting. And that message would be, do not put a dent in the public perception of EVs because we're so heavily leveraged on the concept of all driving to electric fucking utopia. We've already laid out all the buzzwords, dude. We need to keep it all looking shiny. Sure, we haven't really done anything to manage the salient risk to public health. That's all, you know, in the too hard basket. But we don't want anyone in the public thinking about that, and we certainly don't want the mainstream media speculating about where the next giant EV cookout might be. What's being missed here is the opportunity to learn from this disaster and implement a s appropriate safety countermeasures throughout society so that the integration of EVs does not literally just go up in smoke. <laughs>